From the start of the series, we have been focusing on the theory portions of reinforcement learning. What are the different components of reinforcement learning, different learning algorithms, small examples and so on. Now it's time to apply some of these algorithms in the real world. We will start off with this toy example which you have already seen in the previous video and see how SARS and Q-learning performs. This is called the cliff walking problem. Welcome to the third video of this reinforcement learning series where we will try and code out our first RL agent on the cliff walking problem. Welcome to Campus 6. Subscribe to keep following the series. Sit back, relax, and learn. Let's first recap what the cliff walking problem is. There is a 4 cross 12 grid with a cliff on it. The agent has to reach the goal G from the starting state S without falling into the cliff. If the agent falls into the cliff, it is immediately transferred to the starting state and has to start all over again. The episode only terminates if the agent reaches the goal state. The first question one has to ask every time is how do we model this as a reinforcement learning problem? By that I mean what are the states, what are the rewards and so on. Well here the states can be each grid cell and classically the rewards are minus 1 on each transition and minus 100 on if the agent falls into the cliff. But from where do we get the environment? Do we code it ourselves? Well, you can and that is one of the major pitfalls in reinforcement learning where you won't always have an environment to interact with and might have to code it out yourself which is a challenge in and all itself. But thankfully, there are some very kind people who have developed a library where you can get environments for small toy problems. This library is called OpenAI Gym. You can go to their documentation and find out what are the available environments. I typed OpenAI Gym and I'll go to gym documentation. They have divided the environments into different classes like Atari, Mujoko, Classic Control, Box 2D. Our environment Cliff Vault is in toy text and cliff walking. But before going through the documentation, you have to be familiar with the classes of this library and their methods as we are going to rely on them heavily. To be honest, it is very intuitive and easy to understand. The first one is a static function called make. This function creates an environment. It only takes in the name of the environment and returns an environment object. Where will you get the name? You will see in just a moment. The main class is the env class which stands for environment. This class is different methods which we need to know. The first one is reset. After creating the environment with gym.make, we need to call the reset method on the environment object. This method initializes the environment and returns the initial observation of the environment. Next, the step method. This method takes in an action and applies the action in the environment. It returns four things. The next observation, reward, a boolean parameter done which marks whether the episode has finished or not and some other information. Next, the render method. This method returns the representation of the current state of the environment. It has a parameter mode which specifies what will be returned. Single RGB array returns a single frame of the current state. Human does not return anything but directly sends a frame to a virtual display. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. Jim uses Pygame to render the visuals of some of its environments. So a human render mode sends the frame to the Py virtual display which Pygame provides. We won't use this mode so much, so you don't need to think about this. The last method is the close method. This method closes the environment and releases all the resources held by it. These are all the methods you need to know to run a gym environment. Now let's see the details of a cliff walking environment. First navigate to toy text and then cliff walking. The first thing you will notice is a summary of our action space, observation space and how to import the environment. See here you get the name of the environment. The description is the same, there is a 4 cross 12 board and different cells are the goal, start and cliff. The actions are 4 integer actions, 0, 1, 2 and 3. 0 is up, 1 is right, 2 is down, 3 is left. Our observation is a little tricky to understand. They return a single integer for each state. They have numbered each cell in the grid in row major order and thus the integer ranges from 0 to 47, both included. The rewards are as discussed, 
minus 1 for every step and minus 100 if it falls into the cliff. Now let's set up our ID and start coding. All the code that we will be doing can be found in a GitHub repository. The link is in the description below. Now for every video I am going to have a different branch and the code for that video can be found on that branch. But you don't have to clone the repo and do the setup yourself. We will do all the things manually and you can follow along. We will start by downloading and installing PyCharm. So download PyCharm and I'll go to this link of jetprints.com and you can go ahead and download the community version which is free. Uh, there is also a professional version which is free for 30 days but you can we can make use of this community version. After you download and install it, when you open it, it will look something like this. You won't have so many projects. Uh, I do have some. So let's create a new project. Now we have to give the project a name. We'll name it reinforcement learning. Sounds like a good name. Did I misspell that? Yes, I did. Reinforcement learning and I'll give the name of the virtual environment here. Uh, reinforcement learning VNB. It is a Python 3.8 uh, interpreter and I will hit create. Okay, after it has created your environments and all, let's install some uh, packages which will help us in our work. So we have to select our, I don't know why it's showing no interpreter. For some reason it's showing no interpreter. Uh, okay, we'll cancel it. Go to reinforcement learning interpreter and there it's showing my Python interpreter. It's loading all the packages that are there. There are three packages, but we'll need more. The first one will be Jim. We'll need Jim, which is 0.24.1 version. The next one we'll need is OpenCV Python. Just to render some visuals. And probably from OpenCV Python we'll get NumPy. So let's wait and watch. Alright, so we do have our packages Jim, NumPy, OpenCV Python. And we'll see down the road if we need more packages. Alright, so let's start by coding a random agent. A agent which behaves completely randomly. So I create a new file and give it a name um, random agent. Uh, do you want it to git? Yes, I do because you people will need it. We'll start off with importing the libraries, import gym and we'll need numpy for now. If we need more, we can write more. Uh, we'll start by creating the environment using our make method. So gym.make and we will pass the name of our environment which is cliff walking v0 and we store it in a variable cliff env. The first thing that we have to do is do a cliff env.reset. This method initializes this environment and returns an initial state or observation. We are considering the observation as state here. Next, we will need a boolean which marks the end of the episode, whether an episode has finished or not. So done means, done true means the episode has ended. While the episode has not ended, the first thing we need to do is select an action. Uh, we can select an action randomly because this is a random agent. We will select an action randomly. So there are four actions 0, 1, 2, 3. From there we have to randomly select one of them. So we can make use of our uh, randint method which comes with numpy. So we'll pass the low as 0, high as 4 and size to be 1. This says that uh, we need only one integer and we'll store it in action. And sometimes when you don't cast it, Jim complains. So cast it to an integer. The next thing that we'll do is take this action in the environment. Remember our step method? It takes in the action and applies it. After that, it returns four things. State or uh, the next observation or reward whether the episode is completed or not and some information which we are uh, disregarding. These are some bookkeeping information we are not 
considering that and at last what we can do is when our episode is finished we can close everything so we are resetting the environment while the uh, environment has not finished we are selecting an action and then we are taking an action in the environment catching the next state uh, the reward and whether the episode is completed or not and at last we are closing the environment but we also need to see uh, what the current state of the environment is right and what are the actions that the agent takes so let's print out something let's print out uh, the current state of the environment using our render method remember you rendered but this time okay not cliff dot render we'll use cliff env dot render and we'll use the parameter mode this time we'll pass in ansi okay what ansi does since this is a toy text problem cliff walking problem is a toy text problem in gym uh, they give us something a string and we are just printing it in ansi mode okay and you'll see what it looks like in just a second not only do we want to see what the current state of the environment is uh, we would also like to see what action the agent is taking so let's do this uh, let's just print in our whatever the state variable holds and action uh, to give some help we will add an arrow here okay so let's run this you can right click and run random agent or press ctrl shift 10 and this is what it should look this is what is being returned from our render method it returns a formatted string and this is the state the state is 35 and you are taking an action 2 but uh, action 2 does not help us right so let's just format it a little bit uh, for action 0 we have up for action 2 we have right for action uh, sorry for action 1 we have right for action 2 we have down and for action 3 we have left so we are just creating a list and we are just passing using the actions as indices It is currently generating an episode which is not finishing for some reason. Uh, Alright, let's rerun that. Sometimes it can happen. Of course, it's a random agent. It can randomly take it infinitely. Only if the agent reaches the goal state, the environment finishes. Otherwise, it can just go ahead and take actions infinitely. So you can see that on 35, which is this state, when it took it down, it reached the goal state. Of course, this was the random agent since Jim did not give me something to show you I had to create a visual of this environment by myself so I coded a frame for an environment and uh, what I'm doing is creating initializing a frame and putting an agent on state 11 okay if you want to see I will just right click and show you it comes up here so you can see on state 11 the uh, agent is there and I created this visual because Jim did not give me anything uh, the intricacies of the code is unnecessary for this uh, tutorial so I can you'll just find it in the github link okay so uh, let's make use of these two functions that I wrote and uh, let's put this visual into our uh, random agent and see what it's doing so we'll start by pasting this these functions which you can get from the github repository these are the two functions the first one initializes a frame or creates a frame the next one puts an agent into that frame uh, we will start by creating a frame initialize frame and instead of printing we will put an agent okay so put agent on this frame and I don't want to put the agent on this frame because I'll just use that frame over and over again. So I'll put it in a copy of the frame. I'll pass in the state of where to put and I will store it in frame two variable. Okay, next I will display the frame. I'll give a window name cliff walking and I'll pass in, I want to show frame two. This is just OpenCV doing its job. Uh, it tells me that cv2 is not imported so i'll go ahead and import cv2 next i'll use a cv2.wait key 
and I'll give it 250 milliseconds. So what it does is basically after 250 milliseconds, it will show the next frame. We can uh, keep this print statement, but for now I'm going to remove it. Let's run this. Okay, so here you can see the agent moving around. This is a random agent and the reason it's stuck here because from here it can take a left or down action which leads it to the same state. It's just like striking a wall. Same here with these states where you can take an up action and you will land up in the same state. So this is fine and all. Let's apply some of the algorithms that we have learned till now like SARS and Q-learning. Alright, let's start with Sarsa. I will create a new Python file and I'll name it Sarsa. That seems like a reasonable name to give. I will start by importing our packages, jim, numpy. Next, we will make our environment using jim.make. Cliff walking v0. Next, we will initialize our action value function, which will be a table in this case. So I'll name a variable Q table and I'll use np.0 to create a matrix. The matrix which will be of shape 48,4. Why? Because there are 48 numbers, 48 states and each row represents a state and each column, there will be four actions which will hold the Q values for each of the four actions. So for a particular row, it is for a particular state and what are the Q values for all of the four actions in that state. I'm initializing them with zeros. Let's initialize our done variable which marks the end of the episode. Then we will start off with uh, resetting our environment dot reset and we'll store our initial observation here on the state variable. Next, according to Sasa, we need to select an action we will use an excellent greedy policy here okay so let's have a policy function and let's code out our policy function uh, it will take a state and it will take our epsilon basically i'm saying explore here but our epsilon remember what our epsilon greedy policy does it takes an action randomly with epsilon probability and takes an optimal action with one minus epsilon probability. So what I'll do is from the Q table, first of all, I'll get whatever the state um, Q values are, that what the four Q values for the state are. And then I'm going to use the argmax function, argmax function, sorry, to take out the action which has a maximum Q value. Okay, and I'll store it in action. Sometimes Jim complains, so I will use, I'll cast it to an integer. So this is an optimal action, right? So I am taking the argmax of the uh, action which has the maximum Q value at that state. But I would also need to select the action randomly with epsilon probability. So let's do this classic random code. So this code says that with epsilon probability do something which is in the if statement. So here we will uh, select our action randomly np.random.randint low equal to 0, high equal to 1, size equal to 1. Alright, after we have got this action we will return. So this is basically a policy function, It with 1 minus epsilon it takes in the optimal action and with epsilon probability it takes in a random action but uh, since this is an epsilon greedy policy we need our epsilon parameter too epsilon so i'll have a parameters column here parameters section here not column epsilon equal to 0 0.1 i'll initialize it to 0 0.1 so with this epsilon greedy policy i'm selecting an action next while our okay while our episode is not complete what happened to my spelling okay the first thing that we need to do is take the action in the environment and observe 
the next reward or the next state sorry next reward next state and the done variable and some bookkeeping stuff we are ignoring then according to sarsa we need to select our next action from the same policy so policy and next action from our next state will pass in our epsilon parameter also so we are selecting our action we are taking that action observing the next state and selecting our next action then we need to perform our sub sarsa update so the update is for a particular state and action i would like to add okay i need to add an alpha alpha which i have not initialized so let's initialize alpha with to 0.1 then we need to add the reward gamma into q table for our next state and next action uh, i have not initialized gamma so let's initialize gamma and we will initialize it to 0.9 so reward plus gamma into the q value of the next state and next action minus q table of the current state and current action current state and current action i'll close this off then we'll make our next state as current state and our next action is current action then we can close our environment um sorry not en close cliff env dot close and that's everything for sarsa basically so we are making the environment initializing our queue table writing a epsilon greedy policy initializing some parameters initializing done resetting the environment choosing an action taking the action observing next state and reward choosing our next action then updating using our sarsa update rule making the next state and action as the current state and action at the end i am closing of the environment but we would not like to do it for only one episode we would like to do it for multiple episodes right so let's initialize a parameter called num episodes so basically uh these many episodes will be run and i have initialized to 500 so for episode in um range not random range of num episodes i will do this whole thing except the environment dot close okay it close the environment will close only after the training is complete okay now while the training progresses we need to keep some metrics right uh, how the agent is getting trained and all so one metric that we can keep track of is what is the total reward that the agent takes in an episode okay how much total reward can the agent collect so we can create a variable total reward and whenever we get the reward we will store it so total reward plus equal to reward uh, i'll keep it at the bottom okay and after that episode is finished i can basically print out what the total reward for that episode was so total reward and i'll print out total reward along with total reward i would also like to keep the episode length so i'll have another variable for that episode length equal to 0 uh, and every time the episode steps i will increment it by 1 and i will also print it out here so episode length gth and i'll print out the episode length parameter i would also like to keep a track of what the episode is so episode and uh, i already have my episode variable which stores what the current episode is so 
all right i think that's good enough let's run this and everything will be printed on the console no graphs for now but we can add it later all right let's go to the top we have our 500 episodes so you will see from the initial parts of our training our episode lengths are pretty high uh, it's 140 1855 and it has collected minus 20 43 rewards also so it has fallen into the cliff a lot but as you come down the episode lengths start to decrease now it's in below hundreds and the reward is 2 and when you reach 500 it is less than 30 the episode lengths have dropped now after training i would like to see how this agent performs what it has learned during training but as this script stopped working not stopped working it finished we lost our queue table okay so we would need to save our queue table we'll go to our interpreter and add a package called pickle mixin which will help us save python objects we'll start by importing pickle so import pickle as pkl or something like that just import pickle and after the agent has finished training or after the training is finished we will dump this queue file our queue table so we'll dump our queue table we will open a file and we will name it sarsa queue table dot pkl and we will uh, open it in write mode write binary mode okay and, and let's just print a handy statement training complete queue table save let's run this training for once more and here you will see your queue table now that we have saved our queue table, let's load this in a separate script and see how our agent is performing. Let's name this script evaluator. I'll close up this one. We'll start by importing Jim. We will import pickle because we'll need our queue table. We will import numpy. And we will also need OpenCV because we need to display how the agent is performing. We will start by creating our environment. Then we will need to load our queue table pkl.load and it's in the file. Sarsa Q table dot pkl and then open it in read binary mode. Then we will do our same exercise done equal to false and then we would like to initialize our frame first but let's initialize our environment uh, reset and store our initial state here. I will use two of my renderer functions which gives me some visuals I load them here and we will initialize a frame so frame is going to come from initialize frame while not done I will get my next frame you have already seen this so frame dot copy. I pass it the current state. I will show the frame cliff walking. I'll add a weight key, which displays displays this image for two hundred and fifty milliseconds. Next, we would like to select an action from our policy. And I realize I do not have that function yet. So I will go to Sarsa and copy our policy function. It will be the same. So it's an HLN pretty policy. We'll just not pass an HLN to make it the optimal policy. Then we would need to take an action in the environment using our step method. It gives us the next state. 
we can store it in the current state because we will not need any state uh, will not make use of the state variable uh, after this so we can store it in that same variable whatever the next observation is we get these four returns which is the next state what is the reward and whether the episode has finished or not and at last we will close off our environment okay but uh, we would like to see not one but multiple episodes so let's initialize a parameter num episodes equal to let's say we'll see that for five episodes for episode in range of num episodes i'll loop over this except the close method because the environment needs to close only once uh, i would also need to keep track of what are the rewards so i will have a reward function and an episode length metric actually i didn't need to do this but still i'm just keeping the suspense <laughs> i'll not run now i will not run it now so we'll increment our episode length and we will add our total reward to our reward sorry our reward to our total reward variable and then we'll print off what the current episode is what is the length of that episode why am i mistyping so much i don't know episode length and what is the reward for that episode reward collected in that episode so total reward so basically what it does is makes an environment loads the queue table i have some helper functions for five episodes i will initialize the frame reset the environments and take each step and show it to the audience and whatever our evaluatory steps are so i select an action i take that action and do this over and over again i also keep some metrics so i will go ahead and run evaluator all right so saksha has learned this very nice very nice so this is our optimal policy and sarsa was able to learn it uh, in the book sutton and barto they did not they mentioned that sarsa did not learn this policy they it learned another policy which was this which was sub optimal but uh, we get to see that sarsa has learned the optimal policy so you can see that it is taking the optimal policy and we were able to code the sarsa algorithm properly now let's move on to q learning all right let's start by creating our q learning trainer python file we'll write another script for that we'll start by importing jim we will import numpy as np and we will import pickle to save our q table we will create our environment using our make function clip walking v0 uh, we will initialize our q table np dot zeros which will be of shape 48 comma 4 uh why that shape it was explained earlier now that we know what will be the parameters let's just initialize some of them the first one will be psi epsilon not m dialen epsilon uh i'll initialize it to 0.1 we will have our alpha parameter i'll initialize that to 0.1 we will have our gamma parameter which is our discount factor and i'll initialize it to 0.9 and i will have 500 episodes of training before moving on to the training loop i would like to create my policy function which will be an epsilon greedy policy let's just code it again from scratch so we'll select our optimal actions from using our argmax function from our q table for that particular state uh with probability epsilon i would like to select a random action oops so with probability epsilon i would like to select an action randomly np dot random dot rand in low equal to 0 high equal to 1 size equal to 1 
and I would like to send back the action. Now we'll write our training loop. So for every episode, the first thing we'll do is initialize our done variable to false. Uh, we will start by resetting our environment, which gives back our initial state. while the episode is not complete we would like to select an action according to q learning uh, according to q learning we first have to select an action with our current policy then we need to take that action using our step method we will store our next state our reward whether the episode has completed or not and then we need to take the next action which will be the optimal action uh, how do we do that by not passing any epsilon right if we pass it an epsilon uh, it will take exploratory move with point one probability next we need to apply our q learning update which will be q table for the current action plus equal to alpha into whatever the current reward is plus gamma into whatever q table of next state and action is remember this next action is the uh, is the optimal action minus q table for this current state and current action that's our update and we will make our um, current state as the next state and basically close up our environment after the training is complete now not only do we want to do that we would also like to dump our q file so that we can see how the agent performs we have already written our evaluator script so we don't need to write it again all right so i am opening this file with the name q learning q table.pkl in write binary mode uh, while the training progresses i would like to keep some metrics uh, as we have already seen we would like total reward i would have episode length gth um after we make the next state as the current state we will add our reward to the total reward and increment our episode length after the completion of the current episode we would like to print out the metric for that episode and i think that's basically it so remember what q learning says we select uh, sorry we reset our environment we select an action according to our current policy we take that action we observe the next state and reward and then we apply our q learning update with the action which is optimal in this next state okay so that's our update we make the current state sorry the next state as the current state we keep some met, uh, keep some rewards and let's apply this So you can see that uh, we start off initially collecting too many rewards, uh, sorry, too many negative rewards as it often falls into the cliff. But as our training progress, you will see that uh, our average episode length has reduced. It's, act it's the actual episode length and it has reduced to below 20 and near 20. Uh, let's run our evaluator and see how the agent performs. We would we will change the name of this Qtable file. We would like Q learning Qtable. And let's see how it performs. Okay, it's here. Even this agent has learned the optimal policy using Q learning. Nice, both SARSA and Q-Learning have learned the optimal policies.
Now let's compare source and queue learning and see what happens with different values of the alpha parameter. This graph shows the total rewards per episode collected with Sarsa at different values of alpha. Remember what the alpha parameter does. It limits the amount of error on our update. You can see when the alpha is low, the training progresses smoothly. But as the alpha increases, the agent starts to behave poorly. At alpha equal to 5, the green line fluctuates heavily and with higher alpha, the learning diverges and the agent fails to learn. Seeing this graph, probably the best value of alpha should have been 0.2 instead of 0.1 which we have been using till now. This was with Sarsa. Interestingly, Q-Learning did not have any problems with higher values of alpha. With higher values of alpha, the training was even faster than the lower ones. This has to do with the fact that Q-Learning is off policy whereas Sarsa is on policy. This clearly demonstrates how powerful off-policy learning is over on-policy learning. That's all for this video. From the next one, we will start adding neural networks into the picture. So stay tuned for the next one and see you there.